So I just want to start by asking y'all, have you told yourself lately that you love you? <laughs> yeah? Maybe just looked in the mirror and said, I love you. And felt it and meant it. And didn't feel silly or anything. And thought about all you have done. Maybe just look at your face for a minute. About all the people that you've comforted. All the times that you needed a hug and didn't get one. But you picked up and went on anyway. That time you went to a friend's house who needed you when you were really tired and just wanted to go home. Ever just looked at yourself in the mirror and thought about all the times you made yourself proud? And even when you didn't, just because life is hard sometimes and you're still here, you're still going, and just said, I love you. Why is it so hard for us sometimes to say that to ourselves? It's really easy to say it to others. Before we were born into this human body, into this vessel, we existed as one with spirit and wholeness. When our consciousness focused into this human body, we inhabit right now we experience our first human relationship. The relationship between our physical being and our spiritual being. From that point on, during this life, we are always both. Never one without the other. And there are clues to this everywhere. I've always had this theory about the story of Genesis in the Garden of Eden being the story of the spirit's journey into the physical. Corinthians 3.16 reads, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. In the mysteries of Genesis, Charles Fillmore comments on this scripture and writes, under the direction of Christ's consciousness, a new body is constructed by the thinking faculty of human beings. The materials entering into this superior structure are spiritual substances. And the new creation is a temple or body of the spirit. It breathes an atmosphere and is thrilled with a life energy more real than that of the manifest man. Wow. More real than this. What could be more real than this? What I can touch and feel? Well, I'll tell you. What animates us, my friend? Our source, our spirit, is what we truly are. What we are forever. And here on earth, this most magnificent body and its journey through time and space is temporary. <laughs> to learn and grow and experience through contrast and for the purpose of expansion. So what is our source? Our spirit, our soul, our God. The only word that I've found that describes it and encompasses the whole concept all at once is love. Love is the nature of our source, our spirit. Let me elaborate on that a little bit. I'm not talking about the love from the hippie chick that comes up to you with a flower and tells you, 
Love is groovy, man. <laughs> Although love is totally groovy. And I would so take that flower and be so happy. Right then. <laughs> but I'm talking about the divine love that is the force of creation. And if you've ever had a child, you know that love. But you don't need to have given birth to a child to know that love. You know that love when you truly fall in love. That love that is your source is the same unconditional love that forgives again and again. That sees only the best in a person, no matter what they do. That would let you go, rather than try to hold on and control you. Because they know that's what would truly give you joy. That love would let, let you make your own mistakes. Knowing that experience is the teacher that will serve you best. The love that is your source uplifts and heals and makes miracles. The love that is your source is the same love that created this universe. When you feel that deep, pure, unconditional love, for your children, for your true love, for your parents, for your spouse, for your bestie. You're feeling the love that made you and everything that is. When you feel that love, you're feeling God and the force that created the universe moving through you. That love is your source. And before you came into this incarnation, that love was you, is you. But now our consciousness in this body is experiencing a relationship with that source, a duality. And what a relationship, right? Imagine a partner that loves you unconditionally forever. Before you get too creeped out, <laughs> remember, keep in mind that you feel the same way about them. That's <laughs> vital. Imagine a partner that never judges you and only wants your highest good. Imagine that. That will never, ever, ever abandon you, but will always give you the space you need to be whatever and wherever you want to be, even if that might be a mistake. Imagine a partner who is a wellspring of vitality and healing and supports your happiness and joy with a constant stream of abundant giving. Well, my friends, that is what we have 24-7. You look like you don't believe me. <laughs> And we have the tools we need in this life to take advantage of that relationship. Full advantage. We also have the tools to resist that relationship. We have the same tools. It's how we use them. So, who here has seen Avatar? Okay. Right? I don't even need to say. It was the highest grossing film of all time. From the time it came out through 10 years. For 10 years it held that spot. Just this year, 
it was moved into second place by Avengers Endgame. <laughs> but I think there's a reason. Not only is it beautiful, but the story. If you haven't seen it, it takes place in a distant future. What? And it's about a soldier from Earth who's bound to a wheelchair from an injury at battle. The military, along with corporate interests, sends him to this alien planet, Pandora, a rich, lush planet. He sends, he sends him there because they are mining this precious mineral that's found there in abundance. And the soldier's given a way to link his mind with an avatar or a body of one of the Pandora natives, so he can walk among them as one of them. He's supposed to go and gain their trust, learn their secrets, so they can access this mineral, and then get out. But something happens when he begins to live life in this body. He falls in love with the beautiful alien planet, and with the people, and the native tribe who lives there, and their ways, and ultimately, the native girl that's teaching him. He begins to truly embrace life in this being, while his broken earth body lays in a lab, his brain connected to the avatar with sophisticated computer links. More and more what becomes real to him is the world of his avatar, not the world of the broken soldier. And eventually he sacrifices everything to live the life of his avatar. What is really cool about this story is that we understand this technology now. Virtual reality and the idea of linking the human brain with sophisticated programming to simulate an environment is commonplace now. As science and technology advances, and we can see how all this stuff works on the subatomic or energy level. Science is proving the spiritual concepts we have that have been a part of our understanding since the beginning. It's not just deep inner knowing anymore. The more that science reveals, the more mystical and sacred life is proving to be. To me, this physical body is the avatar of our soul. Our soul, our source, is linked with this body, and our thoughts are the signals the links between our physical body and our non-physical source that manifest our reality for the purpose of this life. We are avatars of our soul. But this is not sci-fi. This is sacred. We do not need to prove that God exists. We are the proof that you and I exist proves that the source exists. This is from The Vortex by Esther and Jerry Hicks reading Abraham. There is no relationship of greater importance to achieve than the relationship between you and your physical body right here and now. And the source, soul, God, from which you have come. If you tend to that relationship first and foremost, you will then and only then have the stable footing to proceed into other relationships. While we exist on this earth, our great work is the work of relationships. Our relationship to our partners, our friends, our co-workers, our communities, our animals, our pets, to money, to intimacy, to food, to politics, to our past, to our future. It is all relationships. And it all starts with the one relationship that made all other relationships possible. The relationship between our physical being and our spiritual being. 
is the one relationship that all, makes all other relationships on this plane possible, and it's the healthiest, most love-filled relationship there is. Yet, we so often ignore it. That would not fly in our marriage, or our friendships, or our boss would not really like to be ignored. Uh, Ginger, I need you to uh, take this file down to a county. <laughs> Ginger, Ginger, take, take this file, take this file. Ginger, you're fired. <laughs> but our source doesn't get mad. We just, we just miss out on the love that's coming. So here's our source essentially saying, I love you all day long. Resistance thoughts blocking the way to that love. Oh my God, I have so much to do. And can you believe the state of our government and the environment? Oh my God, my back hurts. As soon as my leg is wrong with me, I am just getting old and fat and useless. I feel so much better. Oh, I love my husband. I love my daughter so much. Maybe if I, if I just asked him to help me around the house. I've never actually done that before. I bet he'd help me. He's a nice guy. And my daughter, she's so, she's so beautiful and smart and creative. Maybe if I just learn to let go a little bit. Let her make her own mistakes, like I did. So if you're having trouble with anything, or anyone, any kind of trouble at all, first, nurture and align with your greatest love of all. The love that is you. Nurture that relationship first. And nurturing that relationship is fairly easy, especially compared to the other relationships in your life, especially when you, when you do it every day, when you practice every day. 
open and allow yourself to be connected on a regular basis. I'm working with spirit right now because when I get really connected, I start to cry. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> but it's okay, right? I know you guys understand. My face gets all scrunched up and my nose turns red and it's not pretty sight. <laughs> In this lighting, you can't tell. <laughs> You're just radiant. Oh. So if we open and allow ourselves to be connected on a regular basis, and I'm going to work with the Spirit, I want to know how to make this energy just, you know, be joyful. We can use the teachings that they teach you. Mindful thoughts and affirmation. I'm allowing my source to guide me in this moment. Or, I am opening to the constant state of well-being coming from my source. These words, along with the feeling they impart, strengthens this bond. Helps us to remember our true nature, what we are forever. It opens the conduit for the source to flow to you. So we can benefit from all that good. There is so much good. When you're living in mindful allowance of a constant flow of unconditional love that comes from your source, you are strengthening the foundation of all other relationships. So let's take a moment to do that right now. Take a deep breath. Let your shoulders drop. Your neck relax. Observe what thoughts creep into your mind without judgment and just let them go. Take another deep breath. And remember being the perfect oneness of energy from whence you came. Calm love. Perfect love. A peaceful, colorful, blissful essence. Just stay there for a minute. Now, be born and step forward as you. Your body is now sparkling as it forms around your essence. Look down and marvel at the vehicle that is you. Now turn around and see that blissful, colorful, peaceful essence that you came from and notice the cord that connects you, flowing with abundant love and energy. And say, thank you. Now turn and manifest a mirror with your thoughts. Look into it and see your face. It is the face of you, both body and soul. It is the face of God expressing as you. Say to your body from your source, I love you. Say to your source from your body, I love you. Now, doesn't that feel better? When you're ready, come back to this space. If you do this a little bit every day, notice how the other relationships in your life begin to flourish. Thank you. Yeah.